God calls Abraham. This is part 25. God calls Abraham, part 25. And we are talking about the token of the Abrahamic covenant. Everything is coming to an end gradually, and we give God glory. But we know, let me remind you of what has been done so far. You and I could have been in the situation of Abraham at any time. This man was living his life, normal life. And one day, God showed up in his life and called him and told him that he has a plan for his life. And the, he didn't say no. He actually followed God. And the Lord took him out of his father's house. With his wife, Sarah, they left and came to the land of Canaan. When they got there, we have seen so many things that actually happened to this man. But at the end of the day, it is very great because it is his life. His life, Abraham's life. But the great thing about the story of Abraham written in the Bible for us to just continue visiting, preaching over and over it. What is the purpose of that? That was the life of Abraham. So what does it have to do with me if about the story of Abraham? Telling the story of Abraham and so what? The Bible is like that. The Bible is full of stories. But these are stories chosen by Almighty God himself because the Bible is the word of the living God and it is meant for life. So behind the stories that we read in the Bible are kingdom principles. But that are given to people that the spirit of God is at work in them. So unto you, it is given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to them, they are without it. So we speak to them in parables. The kingdom principles are not revealed clearly in the Bible like that because everybody has access to the Bible and this is the wisdom that God has given to his children. When you pick up the Bible that you want to read the Bible, not anyone reads the Bible and understands it. So many people read the Bible, they start sleeping. Many read the Bible, they get nothing out of the Bible. But it is because it is a spiritual book. Bible is a spiritual book. And it takes the spirit of God to bring forth an explanation to the story or that it is written behind what you are reading. So behind the story are principles, kingdom principles, that it takes the spirit of God to actually bring forth these principles that are going to allow you to live your life unto God's glory according to the, it is written, the destiny that, that God had purposed for you to fulfill in this earth here. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you think about it, when you think of life, when you think of we being here in this, this earth, you think about it, you say, well, you know, the day you are born, you go through so much and you do so much and at the end of the day, you die, you're buried, and then that's it. So, what is it? There might be more into that. How we got here, I've always been saying it, that we are not in control of so many things. But unfortunately, the world system is built in such a way that when a man gets to certain standard in the world, he starts raising his shoulders, full of himself, and pride is all over and had forgotten that he is even a human being. This year, you are going to be sensitive to that which God had called you to live for. You must have reason to be living. And your reason cannot be, I'm living for a house, I'm living for my children, I'm, I'm living for... Did you hear me? You know, you're not living for your children, you are living for yourself according to the purpose of the living God. For yourself. They, 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 taking care of your children... It is one of the things that God is expecting from you to do among so many. So many. 
So don't boast of normal life. Don't boast of things that are quotidian. Things that are of normal. You know, the fact that you have a house doesn't make you, you know, you can't live because you want to have a house. The fact that you have money and all those stuff, you know, life is beyond that. Because most of the th these things, when we die, we don't carry them with us. You know, so the same way that we are not in control coming here, you are also not in control going. But there is something that the word of God tells you that you are in control is your life. You are in control of your life. The reason is because God had given us something called the will. The will of a man. So you're going to be making choices. You will decide what is right for you to do and what is not right to stop. So you are in control of those things, including you deciding that you're going to serve God or you will not serve Almighty God. And the Lord will not have anything against you. But the fact is this. The fact is that there are principles of life that are not, you know, controlled by human beings. Not by the devil, not by anyone, but by Almighty God alone. We're going to be standing in judgment one day. You believe it or not, the foolishness will be like you are not going to believe it. And then you will die and find out that it is the truth, that the Bible is true. And you have everything to lose. But right now, as you are still alive and hearing the word of the living God, it is wisdom, just wisdom, to believe the Bible and live your life accordingly. What do you have to lose, by the way? Bible is not teaching you to go and kill anybody. Bible is teaching you to live a you know, righteous life, a life unto fulfillment. So one day when you die and you come to find out that, you know, you know what, all this Bible stuff were not true, where you live the life and you live right for yourself. You were not in contention with people. You were not fighting people. These are some of, the, some of the things. You will live a life full of peace. You have hope in a God that keeps you going. But some had gone to another level whereby testimonies are verified in their lives. In other words, you have come to a point to realize that indeed God is alive and well. Abraham made that step. He moved with God. And he realized that indeed God was there. And the one who called him was able to take him through life. And he continued. He had many issues. Many, many issues. One of them was that he had married such a beautiful, very beautiful girl. Beautiful woman. Sarah was so beautiful that when they got into Egypt, they took Sarah to Pharaoh. The king. He said, this type of beauty, it's only the king that deserves it. But she was barren. And that was Abraham's problem. So the day that the Lord showed up and said, that Abraham, I'm going to have a covenant with you. Abraham said that it's okay. And the Lord keeps on making promises. Promises upon promises. I will bless you. You'll be the father of many nations. You'll be this, you'll be that. So Abraham said, I said it's, it, you know, all this stuff that you are saying, I got that, but I have a problem. My problem is that I don't have a child. So what is life for me to get all these things? I do know that I'm going to die and that at the end of my death, no one is even going to inherit. You know, no one of my seed, just the slave that I bought in this house, Eliza, is going to inherit my, my stuff. God said, no, that is human thought. But I have a plan for your life. You're going to have a child. You have, you have children. And one of your, your, your children, Isaac, the covenant that I'm making with you, I'm going to continue that covenant with him as well. Because I have a plan. Do you know that Abraham was among many people that God was about to use? We started from Genesis 1-1. We saw the case of Adam and Eve. Noah came in as well. And then Abraham is in, in the picture. 
Right after Abraham, Moses is also going to come in. Do you know that you were, someone were here before you got here? And when you are no more, someone is going to, I'm just talking about your lineage. The Lord is not working with everybody in our families. But God, within our families, the Lord is going to choose certain people that he's going to work with. These are all choices as well because probably it wasn't you that God called. It could have been your sister that the Lord called and she had turned God down. Said, you know what, I have you know, other stuff to do in life than serving you. Choice. And the Lord will not have any problem with that. So, if you have made the decision to follow God this year, this year, you have to challenge God on a different dimension. Challenge God. The fact that you wake up every single morning with information, information that people are looking for, they go to fetish places and spiritualists and all kinds of uh, spiritual advices to get those. You are sleeping and the Lord comes and shows you these things. You wake up, you say, Lord, I thank you. It's a grace. It's a very special grace. And we talked about it, how God, even in the life of Joseph, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, that was to be killed, the Lord came to Joseph and said that, take the child to Egypt. Run, run. And it was through dreams. And we dream. And we have seen that dreams are basic channels that Almighty God is using to direct his children. So you're going to be sensitive to that. It's not because you watched that movie. It's not because you ate so much. God is talking to you. You must understand what this dream truly means. The Lord told Abraham, he said, I'm going to establish this covenant with you and with your seed. I want to make sure that I give you something that you will remember every time that you will look into yourself and you're going to remember that you have a covenant with me. God did the same thing with Noah. He said, rainbow. I am putting, putting rainbow in the sky. Every time you see the rainbow, you will remember my covenant. The Lord said, with you, it's going to be circumcision. You are going to circumcise yourself and circumcise everyone around you. And every time that you will look at the foreskin, you're going to just remember that I have a covenant with you. So, in Genesis 17, and the verse is 21. The Lord told Abraham, he said, the covenant that I have with you, it will not stop with you. But I will establish my covenant with your son that you're going to have with Sarah. This son called Isaac. And it's going to be next year from now. The scripture says, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. New century says, I will make my agreement with Isaac, the son whom Sarah will have at this same time next year. We have talked about it because we know that Isaac is not going to be the only child. Ishmael, matter of fact, is already born and he's 13 years old. But the child that is unborn, Isaac, is the one that God is talking about and continuing his covenant with him. And this is something that you have to be sensitive to that as well. We saw from, I, from Ishmael's pers perspective why God is not carrying forth his covenant with the firstborn, Ishmael, but then saying that it's going to, it is going to be your son from your barren wife, Sarah. The wonders are never going to be seasoned in the life of Abraham. And the Lord said, Sarah is going to have a child. You will call him Isaac. And I will continue. I will continue my covenant with him. You know, take something out of this. Because, you know, siblings, they fight. 
Siblings fight over so many things. Parents sometimes are even partial concerning their own children. And children do know some of this stuff as well. Your brother will say that, I know mommy loves you so much. That is why she keeps doing this for you. A sister is saying that, oh look, when it comes to me, it's like daddy is not even seeing anything from my side. In other words, daddy is despising you. For Isaac, chosen by almighty God, and knowing everything that is going on around, there is a stepson just right there. So his half-brother. And how is it going to be? You know, it's so interesting because a time is coming whereby Ishmael is going to mock Isaac. But as far as God is concerned, the promise is upon Isaac and not Ishmael. When it comes to the blessing, God said, I don't worry about Ishmael. I have already blessed Ishmael. Ishmael is blessed. So it is also telling you that you have to be care careful. There is a difference between being blessed materially by God and being blessed with the covenant with God. It's very different. The covenant aspect of it doesn't show always material stuff but it is more like a fellowship with God that God becomes your possession almighty God becomes your possession and you keep going that way you know once you know that you have God with you in the midst of the family circle you will not fight anybody hear me you will not fight anybody because you are not going to be envious of anyone, not of your siblings, not of anyone outside your family because you do know that God has a plan also for your life. God has a plan. So knowing God that way will settle your heart into life. Because you will, you will assign everything that happens to you to Almighty God. So that if God will not, including ev even evil stuff, bad things, you will say, if God did not allow this to happen to me, it would not have happened. That is how far we can actually go. And we still give him glory for everything that happens. Because he said we should give him glory. So, Depression is never going to be your portion because you do know that you have a God that is capable to protect you, to provide unto you, to secure you, and to keep your seeds going as, as well. This is what God was actually telling Abraham. He said that, you know what? This covenant I have with you is going to carry forth with Isaac. Sometimes that is how it is among the ten siblings. God is choosing one person. The Lord chose you. Probably you are the only one in your family that had come to faith to know God and serving God and everyone else is doing his own thing. But if that is the case, this is the choice that you have made for your life. You must be firm to that. You must confirm your faith in the Lord and stand steadfast. Hold on to God that the Lord will carry you through. That shame and reproach will never be your portion. When you are going through stuff, it's just a matter of time, the Lord will see you through. You must comfort yourself that way to keep yourself going because there is no problem that is permanent. No problem that is permanent. There is always a solution. Solution. And God is the solution of all problems. So one way or another, the Lord will see you through. If there is a covenant established upon your life with God, you must continue with all the challenges that come with it. The Lord said that Sarah's situation is going to be broken 
The barrenness of Sarah, a year from now, as I'm talking to you, it is going to be broken. So what is it that you are going through? You see, this is, this is the point. How old is Sarah? Abraham is 99 years old. Sarah is 10 years less. So you can see that at this point, all these years, it's like, God, why you didn't show up early? If you know, you're going to make me that happy. But at the end of the day, he is the supreme God, the almighty who knows what is best for you. You must settle your heart that way so that you are not going to be depressed. You are not going to be complaining. Complaining. They hear your complaints, they can't even help you anyway. So, a year from now, maybe your case will be also a year from now. Maybe your case is going to be right now. But it's almighty God that chooses to do what he wants to do. Look, this is what I say. You cannot live a day beyond the number of days that God had given you. God is the one who gives you how many years you're going to live here. Obviously, we have people that are falling victim of devil's craftiness. That is you being careless in life. But if you are careful in knowing the source of your life and why you are here and why you are living, most likely your life is going to be protected because you will be careful. You will be sensitive and listening to the leadership of the Holy Spirit where you are not supposed to go. You will not be there. And the Lord will see you through life that way. A year from now, Isaac is going to come forth. My covenant will I establish with Isaac. We have to say this, that this is a reconfirmation of the statement that God made in Genesis 17, 19. Remember, God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. You know, you are chosen and the Lord says that he's going to continue with you. It's amazing. The Lord chose you and he said he's going to continue with you. Sarah, your wife, will have a son. You will name him Isaac. I will make my covenant with him to be an agreement. An agreement continues. That continues forever with all his descendants. The Lord is going to establish a covenant with Isaac. But this is not a brand new covenant. For Isaac, everything is new. But for Almighty God, it is an existing covenant that is continuing with Isaac. And that is what we do. You know, we have this uh, heart over our children. We look at them and we look at how the world is going today. We say, oh my goodness, Lord, that you may take care of them. You work so hard. You said, I want to make sure that I leave something for my son, for my daughter for my children. But what is it that you can live? Look at how the world is going as of today. Anything can happen to them at any time. But if I can build a standard whereby they will have hope in this God who is seeing me through, he will also see them through as well. The wisdom of all these things that we are doing for our families, we, might, we have to have the wisdom to make sure that we bring the God as well. Our children. That they will know God. They will know God. Isaac will continue the pre-existing covenant. 
That is the Abrahamic covenant. The time of Isaac's birth is just a year. Next year. At the time that God was speaking to him. Next year. What is it that is going on in your life? What do you know about? Maybe you are so much concerned about that situation. But Almighty God is capable to turn that situation around at his time. At his time. It could be now. It could be next year. It could be a few months from here. The problem with that is that, as I said, it's the Lord that sustains your life. Therefore, you must live with that rest in your heart that the Lord will see you through. That the problem will come to an end. That God will make a way. That the Lord will solve the situation. Christianity is not uh, some kind of jumping, jumping then. It's life. Worshipping God is not I am rich, prosperity, and all those stuff. Those things are just like God said they shall be added unto you. But you must seek to live. You must seek to live. Living your life before Almighty God. And knowing God. Knowing God, not fake. Not faking God. Knowing God. Sincerely. You go on your knees and you know you are praying and you do know that you are in touch with heaven. That God knows you. That you know the Lord as well. This must be. You have to start from somewhere because it is so difficult today, nowadays, to truly serve God. Knowing God and serving God. Very difficult. We have advanced. Man had advanced in so many things. In science and all that. So that brings people to really believe that God is not God is not there. But the Lord is there. The discoveries that we are making, most of them, God is the one behind it. And giving man wisdom to discover stuff. So, we are not to fool ourselves. You know you are limited. And you are limited in so many things. Don't take life for granted. And don't fake life because this is your life. This is your life. You are not living in the sight of anyone. You are living for yourself. Do that which is right for yourself. You must do that because, I mean, this year, what is it that you are trying to prove to? Who? Who are you trying to prove what for? For what purpose? So, cut off all those stuff and start being genuine. Start being real. Be sincere. You know when you put your head on the pillow, you know your troubles. You know your problems. No one is there. You can't fake anymore. So be realistic now. And start living. Living doing the right thing. Living knowing that you are advancing. At this stage, we know that the Lord is asking Abraham to circumcise himself and all his household. Sarah is going to be pregnant because right after the three months of healing from the circumcision, she's going to, she's going to be pregnant. Have just one year from now for Isaac to come forth. So in Genesis 17 verse 22, this is what we are hearing. It says that after God had spoken all these things to Abraham, he left off with Abraham and God went up from him. So God finished talking to Abraham. God arose and left him. Genesis 17, 23, and he says that, and Abraham, listen to this, this is very important. God just left, finished talking to Abraham. Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self-same day as God 
had said unto him. Praise God. Let me read the new century. He says, Then Abraham gathered Ishmael, all the males born in his camp, and the slaves he had bought. So that day, Abraham circumcised every man and boy in his camp as God had told him to do. This is called obedience. This is called what? Obedience. Obedience. So, please, this is one of the spirits that are killing so many lives. The spirit of procrastination. It's a big word. But it, 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 is, it is the spirit that makes you to push for tomorrow that which you're supposed to do today. It is called procrastination. Very bad spirit. Destroys destinies. You have people that are boasting. They, are, they have built skyscrapers with their mouths. They have had all the money in the world with their mouths. They have accomplished great things with their mouth. The reason is because they have never come to a point to make a first step ever. But everything is with the mouth. With the mouth. Tomorrow. You keep telling people that you have everything. But you don't. Truly you don't. It's because you keep postponing stuff. Postponing. You have built a whole world within your heart. But truly, truly, it is only you that is living in that world. When God speaks to you, when the Lord comes to you and shows you something that you must do, please get it done immediately. As fast as you can, you must get it done. This is one of the principles in this kingdom of God because let me tell you, most of the time, if God says, do something, the Lord will be waiting for you to get that thing done before he moves on for a higher height. As far as you have not obeyed, you will be in the standstill, stagnant in that position, and your life can be locked that way simply because you have not obeyed the first instruction. Why do you want God to take you to another level when the first one, you have not even obeyed that one. And many lives are like that. And you have to watch it. You have to watch this year and the years to come. If you want to walk with God, let me say this. One thing with my little experience that I have with God. Almighty God, he is a spirit. We are a spirit, but we have this flesh that is working against our spirit. Constantly fighting. Sometimes you don't hear anything from God. Sometimes you want God to give you a clear direction after your prayers. Lord, please, let me hear from you. And you are not hearing anything. What must you do in such a case? Don't do anything. But the situation requires me to make a decision. If truly you have had this fellowship with God and had been working with God and had never been taking anything that the Lord had said to you for granted and you have been faithfully obeying Almighty God, you're going to see that as he's not saying anything, the situation will be solved by itself because the Lord is behind it. Somebody say amen to me. Listen to me. People are frustrated because they are looking for specific answers from the living God and those answers are not coming. When you don't hear anything from God, don't do anything. But continue in your regular assignment, in your fellowship with God. What do you do? You keep on praying. You keep on praying. But sometimes also the Lord might answer you and say that, and say, oh, you are looking for your husband. He said, that, okay, this is your husband right there. Brother Joseph. Brother Joseph. Did I, did, 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 did I hear right? Joseph. The one that sits at the back of the church. The Lord said, yeah, that's him. 
Lord, it cannot be him. It cannot be him. He's not my type. So you have a type. You have a type. And Joseph is not your type. So you have your specific type. God, this voice cannot be coming from you. Devil, I bind you. I bind you because I know the prayer that I have prayed. I said I need him tall with broad shoulders, muscles, someone that can carry me. Joseph, this one, rikiki guy like him. It cannot be him. But the Lord said it is him. He said, no, God, it cannot be him. So you are waiting for your broad shoulders and all those stuff to come. Obedience. It might not favor you. It might not go according to what you want, what you expect. But that is what the Lord has said. You must obey. Because who knows? Tomorrow, the Lord might develop Joseph to have everything that you want and beyond. Obedience. Obedience to God. At the time that the Lord requires you to obey, it's not always going to favor you. I can tell you that. But you must obey. You must obey. You must obey. Don't bring your wisdom in. It's not your, it's not, he is not your type. Because you are educated. You have money. Come from a good background. But God doesn't care about those stuff. The most important is that the Lord God who has the, it is written over your life, he knows that which is best for you. If you will trust the Lord, as you said, you have faith in God, you will obey. Obedience. How do I know that which I heard is actually coming from Almighty God? Maybe I received that from the dream. I have said it, that God will never speak against his word. So devil cannot trick you. That is why you have to know the word of the Lord. What I heard, is it truly coming from God? God is not going to speak against his word. Absolutely not. Your son Isaac will continue, not Ishmael. Immediately, Abraham took his son Ishmael, circumcised Ishmael. The Lord said it, circumcise all of them. Genesis 17, 23, Ishmael, his son first. And then the same 23, we have all that were born in his house. And all that were born, I mean that were bought with his money. That is another level. Let me put it this way. He did exactly as God commanded him to do. You must do what? Exactly. Exactly as God commands you to do. Do not obey God halfway. Don't obey God halfway. A work that is done halfway is never done. Don't obey God halfway. You are fully in it. You are fully with him. You must fully execute all his orders. Obeying all his orders. Continue. If you are called by God, some of you that are into the ministry work, let me tell you, either he rains or he snows or whatsoever, the assignment upon your life must never cease as much or as long as God gives you health. Did you hear me? Okay. You have to be dedicated, committed. You want to see God on a different dimension? You must be strict to yourself. Nobody is after you to say that, oh, have you done this? Have you done that? But you must be accountable to yourself. People that are successful in life, even in the world, most of them, they don't play games. Go find out how early they, how early they wake up 
and how dedicated they are in the things that they do. So, this year, you are not going to be careless. You are going to be committed, dedicated, and hard working. Hard working. Work hard. You are called by God, you're going to work hard. God doesn't like lazy people. Matter of fact, God does not call lazy people. God does not call lazy people because that's what you are doing. The Lord needs it. And it will be part of your assignment. Sometimes, one time, we have the AT&T guys that came here for the fiber optic stuff that they were, they, they came and they, they set it up over here and, uh, uh, you know, there were some problems and so they have to come at the back to look at what we are doing because they thought that we, we were the one having, uh, you know, creating the problem and all that. So, they came, they said, said ah, we can't, we can, you know, they were like amazed by the way we are using the fiber optic over here. And, uh, and I said, I praise God. But that is my specialty. I hold PhD in computer science. So when they come, they said, uh, how can one, uh, you know, do this stuff and uh, use the fiber to do these things? And uh, I said, well, this is what works for us. But that, this cannot be your problem. Your problem will be on your side. Go look for your problem. The Lord is going to use that which he had given you or made you to become in the assignment. We have never called any technician into this ministry to come and do anything. Computer related, you name it. And we started a long time ago. Somebody came here and was telling Brother Godfrey, he said, oh, the ministry is doing all this stuff. We started all these phone applications and years back when nobody was talking about this stuff. But we were doing them. And the broadcasting pandemic came, people started rushing to broadcast. But we have been doing this years back. And everything was already in place. The Lord is going to use that which he had deposited in you. So it's not like he is calling you to, you know, forget about whatever that you have built all these years of your life. No, the Lord is calling you into a different assignment. But with the resources, do you know the reason why you work for that company? Because the Lord wanted you to learn something from them that he would need. You will need it along the calling as well. So that is why you must be careful not to waste any single moment of your life. People are working for companies and they are thinking that, you know, they are cheating, cheating the company. You keep going to work, you are not learning anything. What is that? All that you want is the money. Seriously? But well, you, you do the exchange between your life and the money. The guy that you are working for, you wake up every morning. Do you, have you ever thought of your health? Have you ever thought of your health? So these things might, you know, they, they have to bring you to make sure that I'm getting something out of this. Something out of this. When we came here, we started plugging our instrument, equipment and all that. Electricity will be going off all the time. Boom. Light is off. Our brother Eddie, sitting down right here. Mr. Saki. One day, he came and the light was off. He went to the back, he looked at everything. And then he was like, okay. He called me during the week. He said, meet me at the church. He came here with his uh, notebook and uh, pencil, making drawings. And the man, not, the church didn't give him one dollar, not even one dollar. Things that would have cost us thousands of dollars was bringing people with him and they rewired the whole place. Gave a standard for the, the equipment at the back there. The type of, uh, you know, voltage that we are using here. Just amazing. But did all this stuff. And from that day onwards, never have we had any problem till today. But he's, he's a member. He joined the church. And then uh, 
this is, you know. But he's, uh, he just retired. He was working for the city. High level engineer for the city. He came here humble. You see him, you will not even recognize that this man had even gone to school. Humility upon humility. Settle things. And everything started. May the Lord raise you unto his glory. Don't play a game with whatsoever that God is raising you. And wait, don't waste your life. Do not waste your time. You must get something. One of the daughters in this ministry here was like, oh, pastor, I, uh, I, I'm already working for advocate and uh, in oncology department and uh, University of Chicago wants me now to, you know, what, what should I do? Uh, I said, well, you have been with these guys for some time. What about here? University of Chicago, what is it that you're going to add to what you have? Is it going to be an addition or is it just the money that you are going there? You must think. Everything is not the money. You must have stuff that you can also consider those things as yours. What is your goal in life? What do you want to become? What do you want to do? Are you working to acquire those things onto that which is ahead of you or you are just in the, in the, in the move making money and you are as useless as you started? The people in his house, everyone, the same day, he circumcised everybody. He did not leave anyone outside. All of them. Don't leave anything unattended. Watch your life. Watch your life. Assess your life. We have made resolutions upon resolutions that we are still at the point of resolution and we are even resolving our own lives. Trying to find you know, who we are and all kinds of... A time must come that you must find your niche of life, what you are called for, and be dedicated and start working towards those things. It is enough. You know, today you try this, tomorrow you try that, and after... You know, and it's... it's, it's you are not... You are not settled. You are not decided. You have to be having one thing that you know that I'm going to be working on this and there is no way that it will not work. It will work. It will work. Don't be all over. Praise God for that. So now, the same day, Abraham obeyed. And then in Genesis 17, 24, we are closing this chapter. The word of God says that, and Abraham was 90 years old and nine. So the man was 99 years old. 99 years old. When he was circumcised. So Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised. Give God glory. Verse 25 of Genesis 17. He said, and Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the same day was Abraham circumcised. And Ishmael, his son. Abraham and his son, both of them were circumcised the same day. Then in verse 27, it says, And all the men of his house, born in the house, bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. So you have to see why Bible is given so much details. Your life must be detailed. Did you hear me? Your life must be detailed. You have to be someone who is after details. Very important. You must be committed to details. Not just be superficial. You must know your stuff. It might be one or two things, but you must know. You have to be sure that that is, you know, 
That type of character is, is, is very, you are strict to yourself. People come after that which you have done. That they will not, you know, I was, uh, let me, this was like, I hate, I didn't, you know, I don't know if it was, uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. Probably it was a very bad character. But when I have done something and someone will come and the person start finding faults and be saying this and, it, you know, it was hurting me so much. Oh, this one here, why you didn't do it that way? And, uh, you know, I was not taking the criticism, you know, from a, on a good aspect. I was like, am I? So, it created some kind of, uh, I don't know if it was good or, or not, but I was like, okay, let me make sure that this guy will not come and start saying things to me. Let me make sure that this guy will not come and start criticizing that which I have done. You know, that, that type of mentality will bring you to sit down and start processing stuff. Watch over that which you are. You know, thinking through stuff. You must think. You must think. This is the world that we are today. People sit down. They think of how they can use you as a stepping stone. This is the world that we are living in today. So if you are not someone who is meticulous in what you are doing, detailed in what you are doing, dedicated and committed in what you are doing, and having real sense of life, a man that has had started life and you are all over, after women, and if you have, a, 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 God had given you one, how many do you need? Jumping from one woman to another, what type of life is that? The same thing that you are a young girl, you must learn to be settled. You said you want to be committed in marriage and all that, but you are jumping as well. Who's going to see you as a serious girl and marry you? Take everything into consideration. Sitting down and assessing your life and looking at the details and plan things, planning, planning, and execute. You think, you plan it, and you execute it. God Walking with God, I said it before, I said he doesn't like lazy people. We must watch and relook and making sure that it is, it is according to his expectation. That should be your lifestyle this year. That should be your lifestyle this year. You must, you must really, you know, get things done. Get things done. No more postponing. No more postponing. And let me tell you, if, you know, some of them, they said, oh, I want to save. I want to save. I want to build a house, but I want to save. How much money can you save before you can build a house? This country you want to save? Seriously? Every single day, there is a bill that is unexpected bill. Every day, something is going to come that the money that you put aside. So how, how do you... You know, progress in such a situation. It is when you need to get things done, get it done. You need to get things done, get it done. Get it done, including even your savings. I am saving and you are having the money on the, on the corner. Go put it at the bank. Lock it in such a way that you are not going, going after it. If it's for the kids, school. Because otherwise something will come up and you're going to go after that money. Be detailed, be committed, plan, execute. Get things done. Move ahead. Move. Amen and amen. This is it. Not wonder that God said that Abraham is a man after his own heart. That the Lord established a type of covenant with him that had run up to our time and it is going to be an everlasting covenant because the man was dedicated the man was, was, was faithful and committed. The man was detailed guy. Single-minded. Single-minded. Know what you have to do and be committed and get it done. Mr. Wittler, do you hear me? We give God glory. That is how we advance in life. Mm hmm Well, we thank God.